Many people, when they hear the name Greenwich, think of Greenwich Mean Time and maybe the Zero Meridian. These are examples of how Greenwich is linked to its maritime history. The name Greenwich is Anglo-Saxon and means green place in a bay. Given its location on the River Thames, close to the North Sea, it is easy to see why. Early signs of human life in Greenwich are graves that originate from the Bronze Age and then again from Anglo-Saxon times. The Romans built a temple in the area of Greenwich Park. In around 1012, the Danish fleet anchored in the River Thames near Greenwich for over three years. By the early 15th century, Greenwich was just a small fishing town. But then, in the middle of the 15th century, a large palace was built in this small fishing town by Humphrey, the Duke of Gloucester. Humphrey was a member of the royal family, so when he died, the palace, named Palace of Placentia, belonged to the royal family and became their residence for the next 200 years. Henry VIII was born here, who was instrumental in developing the navy, and his daughter, Elizabeth I, during whose reign seafaring played a huge role. The only remains of the Palace Placentia today are its latest addition, the Queen's House, and a stone plaque in the ground where the palace once stood. It fell into disrepair in the 17th century and was replaced by the buildings we see today. They were designed by Christopher Wren, the famous architect of St Paul's Cathedral. The new buildings were no longer a royal residence, but a retirement home for sailor soldiers. After some 200 years, in 1873, they became the Royal Naval College. This is the name it is known by today, even though it has been used by the University of Greenwich and the Trinity College of Music for a bit more than a decade. Henry VIII is a well-known English monarch because in the course of his life he had six wives, two of which he had beheaded. He also had a desire for power and waged wars against the countries around him, most of which were unsuccessful and costly. For these wars he needed ships, so he had two dockyards built, one to the west of Greenwich in Deptford and one to the east in Woolwich. With the warships constructed here and by providing a dedicated administration, Henry VIII founded the English Navy. Henry VIII's daughter, Elizabeth I, reigned England for 44 years, until 1603. Her time was a time when European nations were exploring the world, exploiting the American continent that had been discovered half a century before, and beginning trade with far away countries. In England, the East India Company set up business with India during Elizabeth's reign and laid the foundation to the British Empire. Explorers and merchants had their own ships or found sponsors to provide them. At this time, and indeed for hundreds of years, there existed a remarkable system of legal piracy. Any ship could receive a letter of mark from the king or queen, which gave its crew the right to capture ships of countries that were not allies and to loot them. This was called privateering. Through this method, Queen Elizabeth I received gold from Spanish ships. The privateers also helped when the Spanish waged war against England. The combined Royal Navy and privateers helped Elizabeth to win the battle against the powerful Spanish fleet, the Armada. All this seafaring went on with only basic methods of navigation and maps that were not precise. To determine a ship's position on the ocean, it is necessary and sufficient to know the latitude and longitude. The Earth's latitude can be calculated by the star's position using basic instruments and reference tables. Longitude is much harder to calculate than latitude because of the Earth's rotation. Being able to keep the time from the beginning of a journey as a point of reference would have solved the problem but no clock existed that worked on a ship, where it was exposed to varying temperature, pressure, 
humidity and the movements in sometimes rough seas. But improvements happened on every level. To observe the stars and improve reference tables, the Royal Observatory was built in Greenwich in 1675. In 1714, the Board of Longitude issued the Longitude Prize of £20,000. A clock or chronometer on a ship that would tell the time accurately after months of crossing the ocean would fulfil the requirements to win the prize. Leading scientists of the time, such as Huygens and Newton, didn't believe it was possible to create such a clock. But of course it was. A carpenter with an interest in clockmaking, John Harrison, took on the challenge and created the H4 chronometer. The H4 went on a journey from England to Barbados, where it proved even more accurate than required. But Harrison didn't get the prize. He wrote a petition to Parliament and even to the King at the time. In the end, he received money, the same amount as the prize, but he wasn't awarded the prize. In fact, the prize was never awarded to anyone. For safe navigation, any line of longitude can be used as reference. But in order to share a position with others or mark it on a map, one has to agree on a reference meridian. By 1884, the majority of the world's ships used the Greenwich meridian as their reference prime meridian. So, at the International Meridian Conference in Washington, D.C. in 1884, 22 countries voted for the Greenwich Meridian to be zero or prime meridian of the world. Likewise, the time at Greenwich became the reference known as Greenwich Mean Time. A landmark of Greenwich is the Cutty Sark. The Cutty Sark was a tea clipper, a fast ship to bring tea from China to England. She was built in 1869, at a time when steamships already started replacing sailing ships. Katisar is based on a character from a poem, a witch by the name of Nanny Dee.